Today, I'll be showing you how to take your video from this to this in a stupidly simple way. For your information, this is actually a remake of a video I did like three to four years ago at this point, but my god, I was so fucking stupid back then. I didn't know anything about what I was doing, so... This is my attempt to remedy that. Pay close attention, it's very important, otherwise I will stab you in the butt. But let us not forget the piece de resistance. A blank VHS tape. You can go to your thrift store and get one of these things for like a dollar. That's how I got mine. The piece de resistance. Oh, oh, that's the stickers. Let's assume you're making a video right now and you still have the chance to change some things about it. There are two things you should consider. Number one, make sure your video is in 4x3, 640 x 480px. It can be bigger, but it's a lot harder to make sure it looks right if it's bigger. You're gonna have to downscale it anyways, so. Number two, make sure your video is in 60fps or 59.94fps. One more thing, make sure you put like a 10 second leader before your video, just to give yourself like time to set up everything, you know? It really helps, because like, imagine doing a whole capture and just finding out something's fucked up. That would suck, right? Well, that's what the leader's for. Brace yourself, this part is gonna get very kooky, with a lot of techno wizardry involved. This might break some people. Links to all the software using this part will be in the description. <clears throat> in your video editor, make sure the video is exported at a resolution of 720 by 480 a frame rate of 59.94 frames per second, and the pixel aspect ratio is set to NTSC DV standard, which is about 0 0.8888 something, there's a number. Now, put the finished video into a folder with a binary of FFmpeg, then using command prompt or terminal, run the command that's in the description. Replace input with the file name in the video you exported, and output with your desired file name. Next, we'll be using the software AV the Mux to get the codecs right. Set the tabs as follows. Video output, MPEG2. Audio output, AC3. Output format, MPEG PS Muxer. Now, let's do some configuring. In the video output configuration, Make sure aspect ratio is set to normal, then go to the interlacing tab, set interlacing to interlaced, and field order the top field first. Skip over to the muxing configuration and set muxing format to free. Then just render it out, and there you go, one ready to go video file. I'm not even fucking joking when I say that my hero is this fucking Chinese portable DVD player. It is legitimately the only connection I can make between my computer and this VCR. Unfucking believable If this part doesn't work for you, just get like a DVD RW or something so you can tape from a regular DVD player. But this is easier for me to do often, so... I would love to show you the process on this old Magnavox back here, however... That was the new tape that I showed off in the beginning of this, so... Safe to say, it's not safe to use this thing anymore. Fucking... One dollar, I'm never getting back. We're gonna retry this with... Um, my Panasonic VCR, which has HDMI out, so I'm gonna get it to record on the Panasonic. And now I'm gonna play the video, and I'm gonna quickly hide the uh, on-screen display. Okay, we're done, we're done, we're done. Stop the VHS tape, and we're ready to go. All right, step two! Congratulations, your video is now on tape. But, to quote Baby Brent, How you gonna get it off, nerd? Now, you could always record off of your CRT, but that's not an option for me right now, as we've seen previously. That's where capture cards come in. Now, you have two options. If you're on Windows, you can get yourself one of these IO Data GV USB 2 capture cards to capture composite and S-Video video, and it looks great. Like, I am so glad I bought this thing. The GV USB 2 is $50, so that's like a big investment, but trust me, it's worth it if you're going to be doing this often. However, it doesn't come with Mac drivers, so instead I have to use this HDMI capture card I got off of Amazon for like $20. Since I really do not want to boot up this um, awful Windows laptop that barely works and has to be plugged in all the time, I'm going to use this one, because I have a Panasonic VCR with HDMI out. Okay, so I have my... Um, uh... My uh, my uh, Panasonic VCR open with this now. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna take my tape. I'm gonna put it in. Rewind the tape a bit. Okay, so this is something to mention. If you are using your GV USB 2 to do this, I would suggest enabling deinterlacing in OBS and then setting your deinterlacing to YADF 2X and make sure you're exporting at 640 by 480 
at 60 FPS to make sure you're getting the VHS video exactly as it was saved. And there you go! That is how you get your um, VHS tape off of VCR. Well, that's the tutorial. If you learned something from this, then, uh, wow, I, I guess I did my job. Oh, and if you use this to make analog horror, I'm gonna find you, bro. I'm gonna find you, little bro. I know where you live, little bro.